We're honored to be joined by uh, Bonnie O'Brien, president and CEO of an organization called Transition Professionals. This is part of our 25 for 25 initiative, recognizing 25 winners of the Rustberry Making a Difference Awards. Um, Bonnie, tell everyone what Transition Professionals is. So we're a reentry program serving Northern New Jersey. Anyone who is coming from jail or prison um, who needs any type of assistance can come to us and be helped. We provide all sorts of wide array of services, clothing, uh, anything that someone needs to get them back on their feet and return them back to society and create a, a situation where they're coming from a tax taker to a taxpayer. You know, it's interesting. This is going to be seen in 2021. COVID is still a big part of our lives. Everyone hoping and praying about the vaccine. But let me ask you this. If someone says, hey, wait a minute, we have to prioritize the problems and issues we have in society. And prisoners re-entering society, society uh, effectively, successfully, it's not a high priority, not the way I feel. I'm just putting that out there. Talk to those folks and tell them why it's in everyone's interest, not just someone getting out of prison, trying to get back on the right track and do the right thing. Well, first of all, if someone gets out of prison and they have no place to go, technically they're homeless. If they have no way to sustain themselves, if they have no opportunity to feed themselves, they're going to revert right away back to crime. So what we try and do is connect them with services that will help them get back on their feet. That includes welfare, food stamps, um, shelter, whatever it is we can do. And then once the person has been stabilized, the next thing we work on is employment. If they are workable, they should be employed. And we do resumes, we do job searches, we make phone calls to employers, whatever we can do to get this person employed. You know, it was 1997. <clears throat> that we met, <clears throat> excuse me, at the Rustberry Making a Difference Awards. First of all, what did the award mean? What did the award mean and does the award mean? And second, what was it like being in that room with all those other extraordinary leaders of organizations making a difference? It was overwhelming. Um, up to that point, I had been, we're all volunteers, and I had been financing the organization. I had decided to start this organization after I was volunteering in the jail for so many years. And I said, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it full-fledged as a one-stop center to help people getting out of jail and prison. Was that and the Bergen County Jail? The Bergen County Jail. Okay. And, and when uh, I was nominated for the award, I thought that was great. I had never heard about it before. But when I won the award, that $50,000 went straight wow. into our coffers here. And we were able to sustain paying the mortgage payment, the rent, the utilities, and much, much more. And since that time, we're no longer a solely volunteer organization. We are funded by the state. We get a myriad of donations in, and we're able to help people more than ever before. Wow. I remember, it's, it's so funny, people don't know who wins that $50,000 um, prize and that is the largest cash prize and, and by the way by the way of background you'll see the very website up 366 winners over the past uh, 25 almost 25 years it's actually since 1997 that's why this is called 25 for 25 25 winners over these 25 years um, 3.5 million dollars in cash awards people don't know who wins that fifty thousand dollar award you were pretty surprised weren't you I was totally overwhelmed, shocked. In fact, when they called my name, I just sat there because I just was in a zone. I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah. So it, it was overwhelming. They're a wonderful organization. I wish there were more like them to help smaller nonprofits like ourselves and all the other winners, but they've done a great job uh, overall over the years. And, and you know, Bonnie, speaking of not-for-profits, Angelica Berry, uh, the, the head of the Board of Trustees of the Foundation, and I had this conversation on the air, um, we've had it off as well, about the impact of COVID on not-for-profits. Talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the work that you and your colleagues are doing. So when COVID hit in mid-March, we were still fully operational, uh, running eight programs in the Bergen County Jail. Um, at the end of March, we were no longer in the Bergen County Jail, but we were still open. We have a lot of homeless on the streets, and we collect mail for at least 40 people who are homeless. Uh, so being closed really wasn't an option. I was coming into the office two and three times a week 
to make sure that people were getting their mail and to see if there was anything else we could help solve some of their problems for. Um, as of June 1st, we opened completely our doors. We haven't um, been closed since June 1st. We're open every day, Monday to Friday. And we started to go back into the jail. Um, we go in now on the visitor side because there's still a need for people, sure. once we've identified them in the jail, that they may be homeless or they need services. We go in ahead of time so that when they're ready to get out, we're already primed to assist them with whatever they need. Bonnie, you mentioned getting out. Talk about the impact of quote unquote early release of prisoners. So the state released quite a number of prisoners on November 4th. This, well, by the way, this is being seen in 2021. So we're talking oh, about 2020, but go ahead. November 4th, 2020, quite a few prisoners were released from the state of New Jersey, many of whom came back to Bergen County, many of the whom had no services in in effect for them. So we were able to connect them with the Board of Social Services, get them into the hotels because our shelter had been shut down and Board of Social Services was putting people temporarily into hotels. So once they're stabilized and they have housing, then we go ahead and see whatever else we can do for them. If it's a matter of getting them uh, documents of identification, that has also been more difficult with offices being closed, um, county offices, municipal offices. So we do whatever we can to get them their documents of ID. We connect them with mental health services. Uh, we give them clothing. Uh, the good thing about COVID is people are cleaning out their closets and donating a heck of a lot of clothing. So we have clothing for people. In fact, we bring clothing down to the jail because they may have gone in in the summer and they're coming out now when it's cold. Um, right, before, before, I'm sorry for interrupting. Before we end, though, I need to ask you this. Biggest misconception from your perspective of many people, I'm not sure it's most, of many people about the formerly incarcerated, what's the biggest misconception about them? That they're all criminals. That, I mean, yes, they've committed a crime, but sometimes the justice system isn't always just. And sometimes people will um, agree to a sentence when in fact they may not have been totally guilty. I've learned a lot working in this field and I've worked with a lot of judges, I've worked with a lot of attorneys, and we realize that the justice system is not always just. And race matters, socioeconomic status matters, Absolutely. legal representation matters, all those things matter. Uh, one more, do this before we leave. We'll put up your website one more time. If people wanna make a difference and try to be helpful to what you're doing, um, can they volunteer? Can they contribute? What can they do? We've got a few seconds. So they can volunteer, yes. We're always looking for volunteers. It can be remote volunteering or it can be here in person in the office where they're actually face-to-face -face with people. They can donate, um, whether it be tangible items or whether it be financial support. Uh, we have a lot of people who eventually do get into apartments and they need a lot of things for those apartments, so household items as well. Bonnie O'Brien is the president and CEO of an organization called Transition Professionals, one of 25 winners of the Berry Award for making a difference uh, that we're featuring in 25 for 25. Bonnie, thank you so much. We wish you all the best and, and the, your colleagues doing important work. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks, Steve. I'm Steve Arvado. We thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.